Hi, Thomas from Field Tennis. There's a certain way of hitting a tennis ball that I call the law of effortless power. And this law of effortless power is not the most intuitive. So let me show you what I mean. If, for example, I want to throw the ball towards my target, which is my basket of balls there, then when I throw the ball, I will orient towards the target and I will also swing towards the target. So my normal throw towards the target would look something like this. If, for example, I want to bowl the ball on the ground, I would do the same. I would start orienting towards the target and my swing is also towards the target. And so this is the most logical and intuitive way of sending the ball somewhere. Now what happens in tennis when we do that, we also think, okay, here's the ball, I will swing towards the target and I will orient towards the target. So if I'm hitting a forehand cross court, you might think that it would look something like this. But when it comes to tennis, we hit the ball slightly differently. Namely, we actually want to orient towards the ball and not towards the target. And we also swing towards the ball first. So my stroke would be something like this. Because it's hard to see the difference in my demonstration, let's look at the problem in reality. When I started working with Thea, she was hitting her backhands most of the time very close to the tip of the racket. That's because she was orienting too early towards the target, as is commonly the case. That early orientation towards the target pulls her racket away from the ideal contact point, and she mishits the ball slightly and therefore hits it inefficiently. To better show you the problem of mishitting the ball and also not hitting it very efficiently, let me show you on this stationary ball what I mean. So if I'm swinging towards the ball normally right now, you can see that the ball would hit the racket in the sweet spot right in the middle. So the, the problem that I'm talking about is that when we orient too quickly towards the target, and you can see my target there, my basket of balls cross court, when we do that and we turn like this this way, you can see that by doing that I'm pulling my racket away slightly to the left. And what happens is that I'm hitting the ball more on top of my racket and that's not a sweet spot. So I won't hit a clean ball and the ball also doesn't bounce really well away from the sweet spot. So it really bounces really nicely off the sweet spot but as soon as we go a little bit off the sweet spot there is much less power coming into the ball. And so if we keep hitting the ball like this, we won't hit it consistently and we won't hit it with good power. And that also causes other problems. For example, we feel that we don't have power. We feel that the ball is not going nicely and then we're looking for more power. We're getting more tense and we're causing more and more problems. And so, as you can see, that's the number one problem. I'm swinging towards the ball and then I orient too quickly towards the target. I turn my head, I turn my body. I start swinging too early towards the target and I will start hitting on the tip of the racket. So your question now will be, okay, if I need to swing towards the ball and I don't want to orient towards the target, how am I going to hit the ball to the left? To better answer that question, let's switch the angle so you can see from the side. So again, what I'm saying is that we need to orient towards the ball and not towards the target. And we also need to swing towards the ball, so that's swinging outwards because the ball is a little bit on my right and in front. So I'm swinging that way, which is away from the target, so my target is on my left. But I want to show you like this. Let's say I'm going to hit a down the line shot. And you can see this is my racket angle, if I hit down the line shot. And now if I'm going to change the angle so that my racket points cross court, this would be the change. So right now I can see that the ball would go towards my basket of balls cross court. So this is down the line and this is cross court. So what I want to tell you is that when we swing with normal speed, our racket is going to traverse this distance in a split second that we're not aware of. So it's going to go in a few thousands of a second probably. It's going to make this distance. And so we cannot be aware of this short time. So what we are aware of is that we are swinging outwards because this movement maybe lasts half a second. 
And so I do feel that I'm hitting outwards, I'm oriented towards the ball. I'm actually transferring my weight into the ball and not in towards the target. But because my racket angle is a little bit cross-court, that's why the ball will go cross-court. So that's the first impulse that the ball gets so that it goes cross-court. So even though you might think I'm swinging that way and I'm transferring energy that way, surely the ball will go that way. It doesn't really go that way. It goes where the racket head points at the moment of contact. Now another thing what I want to say is that eventually when I reach the ball I cannot really go further in this direction, outward direction, much because you see I would lose balance if I'm going that way. So at that moment as I'm hitting the ball I am actually starting to swing towards the target. So again the difference between an incorrect stroke and a correct stroke is very small. The only problem is that you might be orienting towards the target a little bit too early and what I'm suggesting is that you keep swinging towards the ball, you keep transferring the weight, the weight towards the ball, you keep facing the ball with your body and with your head and you just learn to first direct the ball towards the target with your racket head and not with your swing and you will see soon that eventually you're going to make this transition from the outward swing so outward and then towards the target at first it will feel very strange but you're gonna make it very smooth in a very short amount of time and you're gonna clean up your stroke so that you're gonna hit the ball in the middle of the racket and the ball will also receive much more energy much more power than you thought before so here's how you can practice the idea of effortless power as you can see, I'm asking Thea to keep moving in the direction of the ball and not in the direction of the shot. Keep in mind this is an exercise that exaggerates this principle of going into the ball so that the player starts to feel the purpose of it. I do ask her to rotate her body through the stroke, but I want her to keep moving in the direction of the ball. Once I see that she hits a very clean shot consistently in the middle of the racket and she confirms that she gets it, then I ask her to shorten this movement through the ball so that she doesn't lose ground on the court but that she still feels that she's going into the ball and not towards the target too early. As you can see once the player has the feel of how to hit the ball cleanly they can find it also when they don't exaggerate the movement in the direction of the ball. Their stroke looks just normal but in reality they're hitting a much cleaner and more consistent stroke than they were hitting before when they were rotating too early towards the target. This same principle applies to the backhand slice too, but in this case I simply want her to move more to the side as there is no body rotation when hitting a slice. So again we exaggerate the idea and then we shorten the move so that she doesn't lose ground on the court. We also practice this on volleys where again we need to face the ball and move through the ball and not towards the target. The swing path though is much more towards the target with the arm than it is when we hit a ground stroke. A good way to stop the exaggeration of going through the ball but still maintain some level of it is to feed two balls quickly and ask the player to cover the second one well even though they moved slightly into the first ball and transferred weight well into it. That's how they learn to really commit to the first volley and hit it well even though they know they need to recover quickly and reach the second volley on the other side in time. You should do the same drill on the serve, especially since orienting too early towards the target is one of the most common mistakes on the serve. And instead of going just sideways into the ball, Think also upwards into the ball, since the ball is now above you on the right, for right-handers of course. So I'm asking Thea to move into the ball at contact at first, and then I ask her to shorten this principle, but still use it when she hits her regular serve. The best way to start learning this effortless power is to do the drills that you saw in this video, that we did with Thea where at first we exaggerated the movement through the ball. So she was always moving in the direction of the ball and not in the direction of the target. 
on all strokes. So on the volley you're moving in the direction of the ball or on one hand it slides. And also on the serve you can try moving first in the direction of the ball. So that's roughly at a 45 degree angle even when you're serving to your left. So for example, if I'm serving towards my basket that you can see there, the most common mistake that players do again is they orient very quickly towards the target. But what I'm suggesting that you do is that when you see the ball up here, which is on your right, you keep moving towards the ball while you're serving to the left. And you will see that it's not magic to move to the right and serve to the left. In summary, the law of effortless power says this, we need to face the ball when we're hitting the ball and not face the target. We need to swing towards the ball and not swing towards the target at first. And we also need to transfer weight into the ball and not towards the target. So we do that just as we're hitting the ball we are changing from the outward swing path and outward weight transfer towards the target. Now this law applies to all strokes. There's only one exception on the one-handed backhand and uh, one-handed backhand slice. Because when we hit the one-handed backhand, we are not facing the ball with our body. So our body is more to the side. But we are swinging outwards towards the ball first. We are transferring weight to the ball and we are looking at the ball with our head. So our head is towards the ball, but the hips and the chest are not. But on all other strokes, we actually face the ball at point of contact. So volley, this volley, serve, smash, forehand and two-handed backhand.